thanks for checking in again. All right, so I've owned my heat pump in Canada uh, for two and a half winters now. I'm halfway through my third winter with the unit, and we just got through one of those polar vortex cold air masses where everything is insanely cold. Uh, definitely, it was about three nights this time, getting down to minus one Fahrenheit, uh, which is close to minus 19 Celsius. It made it through, but I wanna share my data with you over the last few years. What does it cost uh, to run this heat pump? How much energy does it use? And the age old question that you're wondering is, is it worth it? Should I switch? Well, let's get into it. Now, first of all, what do I have? I had my installers put in a rebadged GRI flex unit. Um, my earlier videos, I, I said it was made in Canada and that's cause silly me, I trusted the website. It said made in Canada um, because it's a rebadged Napoleon unit. Napoleon is a Canadian brand. Uh, basically they would ship these in from China. I, I'm not sure what they do. Maybe j they just throw a, a Canadian sticker on it, make sure it's working uh, and still honor the 10 year warranty on the, the compressor and unit. That's fine by me, the, the warranty works um, and it seems like proven technology at this point. So that's what I went with. Uh, Griflex is a super popular brand out there for being one of the more affordable but well-made units. And I've been happy with it. But here's the thing I've learned about it in my data over the last, uh, or comparisons over the last few years. It's what's called a non-communicating unit. So if you're looking at heat pumps, uh, there's different styles. Obviously there's mini splits. They don't go through your furnace. Mine is a ducted uh, unit. It uses uh, the furnace inside to circulate my air around. Not my hair, there's not much left. Um, and the outdoor unit will come off and on uh, as needed. But I say it's not communicating because even though it's a cold climate air source heat pump, the inside unit which is my furnace fan uh, only will set one speed on or off even though i've upgraded that furnace fan to a more energy efficient unit it, it used to have a old psc motor which are not very efficient with my old furnace still have my old furnace but i upgraded the fan to an ecm motor uses about half the energy draw that the old fan did uh, and i do have the option to switch speeds but that outdoor unit sends a signal uh, off or on versus if you get an indoor air handler they don't have gas. The only option for auxiliary heat with an air handler is to install some heat strips along inside that unit. And they can have modulating um, fans inside of the air handlers that will ramp up, slowly ramp up, or even keep just a slow fan speed all the time and help dehumidify better. The advantage of that is your house will be more consistent with heat the disadvantage, it's way more costly. And if you still want natural gas in your home, you're not going to be able to have an air handler or you'll still have to have a separate furnace. With my unit, it was set up initially with a gas uh, furnace as the backup heat, but I've been running for two years now with no gas. Uh, I took the risk and uh, had it disconnected from the home because I don't use it anymore. None of our other appliances use gas. Um, I'll do a, a video on some of the other appliances as well as our, our solar setup soon. Um, but for the air handler, it, it wasn't an expense I wanted to pay at the time. The outdoor unit I got with a grant from the government. Um, so it only cost me around 4,000 Canadian, uh, which was pretty awesome. That included the new indoor A coil in my furnace unit, which I'll show on this little overlay now. The A coil is on the furnace and uh, it's a pretty simple setup. Um, it, it heats well. The other thing I'll, I'll mention during setup with this Greeflex, it was set up uh, to be a two or three ton. They left it in the three ton position. Uh, standard defrost and standard mode, meaning not, it's not using the eco mode, it's not using the heavy duty mode. Um, it is a cold climate air source heat pump and so it has an inverter which still slowly ramps up and will actually adjust the compressor uh, and inverter speed, um, sorry, compressor speed um, and how fa fast the fan is spinning 
based on the outside temperature as well as the pressure um, in the lines. There's a sensor in that as well. So it, it actually does modulate. So on a, a warmer day, even in the winter, let's say it's, it's zero degrees Celsius, that's 32 Fahrenheit. Um, it's not gonna work as hard as on that when it's minus 18 Celsius or, or, or zero minus one Fahrenheit. Um, so the unit still does modulate even though your indoor fan is still just an off or on setting. I thought that's important to note here. Okay, so what has this cost me to run? Um, the heat pump uh, in Canadian funds, which if you want American, take about uh, these days seems like 100% off, but more like uh, 25 to 30% less uh, for our friends in the States. Um, 400 bucks a year is what it's averaged to heat my home in the winter and cool my house in the summer. So take a look at your energy bills and see um, maybe your gas bills for, uh, from oil heating, propane, whatever in the winter time if you're spending a ton of money. And, um, and then look at your energy costs, your electric, electricity costs for cooling in the summertime. I average, um, let's see, the worst month cost me 75 bucks in January to alone for heating. Um, and then that was in 2023. And in the summertime, I spent only a dollar and 22 cents uh, in June uh, for cooling. So that's how more efficient these heat pump units will actually be able to cool your house in the summertime, way better than your, your current um, central air conditioners. In 2024, my August was our hottest month and I spent five bucks in August for cooling and heating um, was again around the same, around 70 bucks uh, that I spent on our worst month. I think this January uh, 2025 will be the most so far. I'll probably be more like 85 bucks for heating just because we've had such a cold uh, January so far. But I'm pretty happy with this unit. We're using only the heat pump to heat our house at this point. I looked it up historically where I live in Southern Ontario, uh, the coldest day ever in my city recorded was minus 25 Celsius. That's minus 13 Fahrenheit. Uh, we've never gotten anywhere near that uh, since I've lived here off and on for the last 20 years. So I'm pretty confident that um, this unit will be able to, to handle what the weather throws at me with no backup heat. If I really need some backup heat, I uh, could look at uh, some extra uh, heating fans or, or whatever in the house, but at this point I haven't needed it. And for those who want to know how much actual energy is that used, it's actually the last few years have only been 50 kilowatt hours different. So in 2024, I used 3,687 kilowatt hours. In 2023, 3,623 kilowatt hours. So around 36, 3,700 kilowatt hours to run the heat pump uh, over the last couple of years. That's pretty good. I offset that with solar. So at the end of the day, um, it's a wash. And um, once that's paid off, you should have some pretty good golden years there where you're protected from rising energy costs. Now my unit was replaced once because of a faulty compressor in the first year of ownership. And I think these settings, the installer actually set that in uh, two ton heat mode instead of the three ton. There's dip switches in the units. These can run the Greeflex as a two or three ton unit as the single fan compressor. Their larger double stack units can run as a, I believe four or five ton, uh, might be three or four. I think it's four or five ton. Um, so mine set up as a three ton can actually pump out the heat pretty warm. Uh, I've had it come out of the vent uh, all the way up to 44 Celsius, which is 111 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty good considering most heat pumps, you see a lot of questions online, people saying, how come it's running all the time? Well, especially if you have a air handler or a communicating device where the air hand, the outdoor unit is telling your inside unit, maybe even your furnace fan, but it's a modulating one to constantly change temperature. These things can run for 24 hours straight uh, and that's the way they're designed because they're just gonna ramp up as needed. A compressor can run, go on a defrost mode and then run again. Mine, as I said in the opening, has a, a single stage inside unit. And so it actually runs more like a traditional furnace fan. It'll come on generally about once an hour for 
20 minutes or so and then it'll turn off uh, the house will generally cool down again in the winter it'll kick on again so it kind of acts more like instead of a gas furnace it acts really much like um, the same same characteristics as you, you're used to with that natural gas furnace except it's just um, it's just pumping out heat mine also in my house i have about a thousand square foot home it's brick and siding the walls are not insulated well probably like r10 r12 that old just uh thin pink insulation my attic i'll tell you has about r30 code now is minimum i think r60 on a new build so that's something i should add to add to our efficiency of the home and um, i think i would see some gains in the future from that all right Final question, uh, would I recommend this to everyone? My answer is gonna be no. You gotta look at your situation. Generally with any home renovation or updating your appliances, it comes down to what is the age of what you're replacing. If something is working great and you can afford it, why switch? If it's getting older and you need to replace it, then consider a heat pump. Look for rebates in your area. Well, that was. Probably the only reason I replaced mine at the time was because of the home energy rebates. And so I went with it and I've been happy with it. Um, I wouldn't have replaced it. My 20 year old furnace, I'd probably still be using it today. My uh, heat exchanger was still going and honestly, it uh, it still worked for me. But these rebates come, came out, I took advantage and I'm happy I did. So there's my recommendation. If your equipment's working great for you, wait till it breaks down and then replace it. Or if you have good credits going on, try to take advantage of those because you never know how long they're going to be there for you. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.